What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's your boy Kevin to turn on this motherfucking YouTube shit. What's up? What's up? It's your boy. <laughs> Can't you know you do shit? Hey man, say man, we are. Lily, lift that teeth, man. Turn, 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 turn. Today, one freaking day, straight hood and outside. Real gang. All right, gang, gang. We're gonna talk about some ish, man. Um, I hope you're having a good day. You know what I'm saying? This is North Side, man. Encryption, man. You know what I'm saying? We out here. Um, getting lit, man. All day, every day. Time, grind, don't stop. So we gonna keep on putting that work in, man. Um, free Palestine and Congo, gang. You know what I'm saying? Tough times we live in. This world is getting crazy. So much natural disasters. We just don't know what can happen next. You know what I'm saying? So be prepared. Never give up, man. You know what I'm saying? Keep on grinding hard, man. Um, uh, uh, make sure y'all keep on fighting for what y'all believe in. Don't let these fuck niggas or fuck people fuck you over, man. You know what I'm saying? This life is, is a dangerous motherfucking world, man. So, you know what I'm saying? We gonna do what we do, man. Each day, each step at a time, man. It's okay, man. We already won. You know what I'm saying? To the Hebrew Israelites, we already won. So, we just gotta keep on putting that work in, man. Never give up, gang. Come to the black Hebrew Israelite. Let's get into this bitch, all right? <clears throat> Today? Two motherfucking days straight hood and outside crib, man. All right, gang. We've been talking about this shit, man. You know what I'm saying? The realest nigga out here in the north side. That's how we doing it. And that's how we staying on business out here, man. Facts, nigga. Hey, man, say, man. So we've been talking about this shit, man. We've been talking about uh, Taraji P, gang. Now, y'all know how we've been having these, uh, these um, holdouts. Uh, you know, he really, a lot of, we do this a lot, you know what I'm saying, during, um, during, um, like, sports and, and, and music and acting. So, you know, in football, you know, in basketball, you know, you got people who hold out and they try to get the most money on they can get out of the, out of the motherfuckers because the NBA gonna make a shit ton of money. If a nigga making a million, they making... 30 to 40 million. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you don't want to get the bare minimum and get, and get fucked. You know what I'm saying? You making only a million dollars and they're making 30 to 40 million. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you want you you, you know you, you you get mad if if they if they if they, if they hold you. So Tyre Tyre G Tyre what the fucking name Tyra P. Her ass man, she had a mental breakdown. Uh, now, we all know black people, man, we put in the most work, we got the most talent, um, skill-wise, best talent, we just naturally just talented better and just smarter, all that, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, with the opposition, you know what I'm saying, the white people, foreign people, you know what I'm saying, other different type of races, we don't get nearly the amount of money we deserve as much as other races. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, we've been going through this for a, the longest. You know what I'm saying? We put the most work in and we go the hardest. We got the most talent. We got, we bring so much creativity to a lot of shit, put the work and time in. And we constantly, we get showed up by the opposition, like the white or Mexicans, where they would get paid a shit ton way more money than what we get paid. And it's like, how do y'all get paid or get into higher positions? And then we put the work in, we do all the fighting, we do all the, that's like when we do the civil rights. When we fight for all these civil rights in this movements and shit with the Black Lives Matter, we fight for all these motherfucking rights and shit. And then we come to find out our rights that we fight for, they, the rights that we fight for is basically used for 
the Chinese or for other motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? They get better rights. The, the rights that we fight for is the rights that the Chinese get. And it's like, bro, y- y- y'all, we fight for these rights. And the rights, we don't even get these rights. But Chinese, they get better rights than the rights that we trying to fight for or fought for. So it's just like, bro, you know, we do all the work. We do all the fighting. We do everything. And it just, the other opposition, the white people, the Chinese, the Mexicans, they benefit more than what we benefit, you know what I'm saying? And that's, you know, I, when I, I ain't got, when I was a kid, you did crib. They already told us, they taught us that in, uh, in elementary, that the world is like that, you know what I'm saying? The black people, man, that, that the video where the kids run around the track and, you know, they put, they, the, the other opposition, the white people, they get to run around the track freely. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Why well, we gotta go through bumps and bruises and grind. And it's really like that in the world, man, you know? And, you know, we got to say it makes us stronger, but at the end of time, you know, yeah, we like it, we like it that we make it strong, but fuck all that shit, nigga, because, you know, we want to get what's ours, you know what I'm saying, fuck all that shit, because when, when some shit happens, you know what I'm saying, we're going to be fucked, you know what I'm saying, because we don't, we, we don't get the, we don't get the shit that we want to, that we get, that we want out of the situation when the motherfuckers who benefiting, they get, all the money on out, out the situation. And that's just like, it's just not acting, that's just like anything, it's like business, you know, you need to be doctors or, or just like uh, restaurants or anything, you know, sometimes the, 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 uh, these businesses, you know, they got a secret um, agenda where they try to keep, you know what I'm saying, the black people down, you know what I'm saying, that's just how the truth is, you know what I'm saying. They want to get the max amount of work out of shoot, but want to pay you as little as possible, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, they get mad when we fight against the situation, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is the thing that always make me mad. I'm like, bro, how do people from a different country, you know what I'm saying? They could be from motherfucking Mexico or some shit, from a different country. You be born in this bitch. And the people who just come in this bitch, they can outperform what you done, and you can stay in this bitch and do what they do, and go you go to work or do whatever the fuck you do every fucking day. And somehow motherfuckers who just come in this bitch make more and do better than what you do, and less than time. And it's like, it, we all know it's not because of the motherfucking um, they just they just got the right moves. And no, they treat people better than a lot of black people. You know what I'm saying? And you know, unfortunately, we live through that type of time where that happens to men and females. It's just, unfortunately, it's not the female. It's the, it happens to men, too. And some of these people, you know what I'm saying, the black people, they get bought. And they keep, they you, they get, they try to keep us down, you know what I'm saying? But that's how it goes sometimes. So, it's good that more people are talking out about the situation because Crip hopefully can come down to the regular situation, to regular businesses and, and, and see what's going on. Like how, you know what I'm saying, we don't get... As much as we should, and when, when you put the most work in, you know what I'm saying. But I hope y'all enjoy these videos, and let's get into the video. Talk about Taraji P Henson. Taraji is trending because she had basically a breakdown. She got emotional on Gail King's serious XM show. And she spoke about her finances and she spoke about how she feels like she's not making the type of money that she's supposed to make. She feels like her and other black female actresses, they're not getting the money that they feel like they deserve, right? For how hard they work. Now going over what we're going to get into what Taraji had to say, but I just want to say this about Taraji P. Henson. I've spoken about her before. Taraji seems like a very unhappy person. She has for, I would say the last couple of years, ever since her most recent relationship disintegrated, she's talked about how she wants to leave the United States, right? How there's no men here for her, right? How the energy is just not right in this country and she just has to go. And now she's on Gail King's Sirius XM show, breaking down because she feels like she's not making the money that she's supposed to make as a matter of fact she said that she only takes home 20 percent of her income after paying her employees 
she mentioned how her agent and her publicist gets a 30% cut. And she says, you have to pay those people. But I want to say this too about Taraji because we just had an actor strike. We had a writer strike this year and we had an actor strike that started earlier this year and went into November, right? They just ended the actors, the, they ended the act, the writer strike first. And then the actor strike pretty much stopped in November. And that's when people started going back to work. They started promoting their shows. As a matter of fact, uh, the guy who plays low key, I think maybe what uh, the, the day of, or the day after they renegotiated with the, uh, with the uh, actors, he was on a late, he was on a, one of these late shows promoting, promoting low key. Right. And they, and that was because they don't get paid if the shows are not on and the shows are not doing well. So they had to go ahead and get to work. I think that Taraji wasn't working a lot this year. There were probably projects that she was looking forward to doing this year that was going to supplement her income. And it didn't happen because of the strike and her and a lot of others financially, especially if they did not have good finances. Now, I don't know what her, the totality of her financial situation is, but it looks to me that Taraji must not be budgeting her money very well or investing her money very well, because if it seems to me that she's living paycheck to paycheck. Because when you are, when you've been in this business, as long as she has, you should know that it's not going to last forever. And she's going to have to find a way to maximize her money. Now it says her net worth is 12 million. So does she not have any investments? Where's your investments? Do you own any property? Do you have any brand deals? Because according to what I see her promoting on her social media, she has her own uh, line of products. Can't think of it right now, but you, she's invested it somewhere. It's a, uh, it's TPH by Taraji. And I guess it's for hair care. So she has invested into that. I mean, is that not doing well for her? See, you can't just, you can't just rely on your paycheck as an, as an actor in entertainment. Even athletes have to invest their money. They either invest it in property. They invest it in ventures. You have to maximize your money, saving it. But it's very clear to me that this strike, even though it ended in November, I believe it started a little bit earlier this year. She is one of the many actors who suffered financially because they couldn't work this year. They couldn't work. And when you're used to living paycheck to paycheck and listen, she's been in the industry for over 20 years. You should have known by now how to maximize your money outside of acting gigs. You can't rely on acting gigs. You're going to have to invest your money, get the right financial people around you. And it looks like she just hasn't done that. So now she point fingers, blaming everybody. Listen, that ship has sailed. This whole, we need to renegotiate. That ship has sailed. When the actors get, when the, when the, uh, when the actors ended their strike and they signed that new deal with the studios, that was your chance. Black actresses, but y'all too busy, uh, demo, uh, demonizing black men. you too, you know what I'm saying? You too busy throwing black men on the bus to look at your pockets, right? You too busy trying to push liberal policies and, and, and trying to force people to accept this person and that person instead of you focusing on your money. Taraji and the rest of these other black actresses should have focused on their money instead of trying to push liberal policies and be a mouthpiece for the Democratic Party. You Y'all, why are we all, why are we hearing about this now? It's 20, it's about to be 2024 and we just not hearing about how black actresses feel like they're not being paid enough. Well, whose fault is that? 
let's get into this. Because the, the finger point to me is hilarious. Taraji, just so y'all don't say that I'm making up anything, says Taraji P. Henson breaks down in tears over her alleged unequal pay. She claims that she's not being paid what she feels like she deserves. But again, whose fault is that? You were stumping so hard for Joe Biden and the Democratic Party and all their liberal policies, right? That you forgot your own self until now. Now you want sympathy from us. Taraji, you and these other women could have spoken about this a long time ago, but you did not do that. You were too busy trying to be an, a political agent. Now, because you realize that, damn, I am living paycheck to paycheck. Well, again, a lot of those people that work for you, Taraji, probably don't even need to work for you. You don't need all those people around you. Like you really don't, Taraji. A lot of times, these Hollywood entertainers, they will hire a bunch of people just to feel like they are big time. I bet you if she looks at the books and the people that she's employing, half of those people don't even need to be there. Half of those people don't even need to be there, but she's paying them anyway. You don't need a huge support staff. You're an actress and you only do acting. You don't do anything else outside of that, that I know of. I mean, you do have this hair care line, but again, we're talking about how you feel about acting and how you feel like you're getting the short end of the stick. Let's get into this. Hold on, let's, I'm gonna play this, this video here on this, right here. I'm just tired of working so hard being gracious at what i do getting this again folks if if i'm not gonna say that she's not i'm not gonna say that she shouldn't feel this way but y'all have been quiet for a long time it's like how do you expect me to empathize with you when y'all have had years to speak about this but you never did Y'all were too busy being political agents. Y'all were more focused on who's dating who, whose orientation, abortion. Y'all more concerned about those things than yourselves. So I think that Taraji needs to understand that this is a fight that you should have been fighting a long time ago, at least publicly. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I get that. I get that. It wears on you, you know? Because what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What is that telling me? What is it telling me? Yeah. And what does it tell me? Mm. Yeah. You know? And if I can't fight for them coming up behind me, then what the fuck am I doing? I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I know. Mm. Don't apologize. Again, I, I, I said this before. And I'm going to keep saying it again. This is a fight y'all should have been fighting. Instead of fighting us as black men, you should have been fighting to make sure that you were taken care of financially. But what you did was you teamed with the liberal lamestream media to attack black men. And I know you're going to say, well, Jane, what does it have to do? It has a lot to do with it. Because I know Taraji. I have seen how she has moved over the years. I've seen the things that she has said. This is the fight that y'all need to be fighting instead of fighting us. Those studios, according to you, Taraji, were playing in your face. Let's get into it. Taraji P, Taraji P. Henson is getting candid and emotional about the state of her finances as a black actress. It's because of the actor strike. The actor strike did a number on a lot of people in Hollywood, especially people who did not manage their money properly, who did not invest their money properly. The Empire alum who previously admitted that she is considering leaving the industry because it's not financially sustainable broke down to tears, broke down in, uh, in tears while discussing unequal pay she received during a radio interview with Gail King to the y'all should have spoke with the Actors Guild. Y'all should have spoke with SAG about that. But y'all did. Y'all didn't say Nathan. 
I didn't say nothing. Now, now because the deal been struck and you didn't get anything, any concessions, black actresses and actors, now you want to cry on these radio shows. Come on, man. She immediately became emotional when King, who's 68, asked about the possibility of retiring from acting, taking a long pause before saying, I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do, and getting paid a fraction of the cost. I'm tired of hearing my sister saying the same thing over and over. She continued, you know this ain't no black men. Do you know why black men aren't on here crying about their finances, Taraji? The same men who've been in the industry just as long as you. Because they've actually invested their money into other things. They actually took care of their money. They don't have a huge staff of people. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure because she seems like she probably has about 30 people on her payroll. Third, about have about thirty. You only taking home twenty percent of your earnings. What? At least the other half better be going to 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 savings or investments. But it's not. You're spending as soon as you're getting it. You're living paycheck to paycheck. And what the actor strike exposed was the people who did not take care of their money, who were basically living acting job paycheck to acting job paycheck. I hear people go, you work a lot. I have to, the math ain't math. And Henson, who's 53, went on to explain after she's paid her team, such as her agent and publishers, get 30% cut. Just imagine you giving somebody 30%. I see why she want to quit. 30%. <laughs> that agent must be very good at their job for her to be, for her to be giving them 30% and a publicist too. Big bills come with what we do. We don't do this alone. She noted the fact that we're up here. There's a whole team behind us. They have to get paid. Hence to estimate that she takes about 20% of her paycheck to the bank after paying taxes and her employees. Y'all got to understand when you're living in Los Angeles, not only is the cost of living in Los Angeles high, the taxes that you have to pay is high. That's why you see a lot of successful men move to Florida. They either move to Texas or they move to Florida because there's no state income tax. But a lot of these women will live in, they'll live in Atlanta. They'll live in Los Angeles, New York. When the taxes are going to be extremely high, the cost of living is going to be extremely high. That's when you see conversations like this. I'm only human and it seems every time I do something, I break another glass ceiling. When it's time to renegotiate, I'm at the bottom again after I've never did what I just did. She further noted, well, you got to get a better agent. If your agent isn't getting you more money to Raji, that's on you. That's on the people that you're hiring to represent you. I see it in sports all the time. You got professional athletes who will fire one agent and they will hire another one because they know that agent right there he's gonna get me a lot of money he's gonna get me paid he's gonna take care of me financially he's gonna make sure i'm good he's gonna make sure that i am making a lot of money i'm successful his team is gonna make sure that i am good and successful if you don't have those people around you, you shouldn't be paying people who aren't getting you those types of deals. The and I'm just supposed to smile and grin and bear it and just keep like mm -hmm. enough is enough. Mm -hmm. This industry, if you let it, whew, it'll steal your soul. Yeah. But I refuse to let that happen. Yeah.
I got the Oscar, I got the Emmy, I got the two Tonys. I've done Broadway, I've done off-Broadway, I've done TV, film, I've done all of it. I have a career that's probably comparable to Meryl Streep, Julianne Moore, Sigourney Weaver. They all came out of Yale, they came out of Juilliard, they came out of NYU. They had the same path as me, yet I am nowhere near them. Not as far as money, not as, as far as job opportunities, nowhere close to it. But I have to get on that phone and people say, you're a black Meryl Streep. There is no one like you. Okay, then if there's no one like me, you think I'm that, you pay me what I'm worth. You give me what I'm worth. So Tyler Perry says to me, listen, you may really want to consider promoting this film because if you get nominated for an Oscar award, your next film is three to five million dollars. And if you win it, your next film is six to eight million dollars. I said, Tyler, who are you talking to? I'm a black woman. Where do they pay those type of salaries, brother? I said, what I cannot do, Tyler, is work for free. I've done what I was supposed to do. I cannot go overseas and do this for free, Tyler. So then he goes on about his spill, you know. I said, well, listen, you can write me the check for me to go overseas. I don't care where the money comes from, but I'm not gonna do it for free. He says, well, I don't believe in giving money away for free. I said, I don't believe in working for free, so we're on the same page. I wasn't even being greedy. I knew that I was up and coming, but surely I know I can make you $500,000 with my fan base. And did you get 500,000? No. I was offered 75. And then we fought and fought until we got 150. 150.
Are you back? So you see from these videos, man, gang, the world, man, the world could be unfair. You know what I'm saying? Now, if if you if you read the Bible, you know what I'm saying, and you know who we is as a people, as a whole, you would know that we in a time where um we getting like low key punished because you know of our ancestors. So, you know, we in this we in this situation in this generation right now where we get over the the 400 year um punishment type shit. So, we got to change it, you know what I'm saying? And we got to fight against the system. Now, the thing about these people, man, is like when when they was when they, okay, when other people was struggling and and fucked and not making no money on and everybody out here just starving, struggling, and they eating, they not saying a goddamn thing. You know what I'm saying? They eating. You know what I'm saying? They doing their thing. They really making big bank, big bank moves. You know what I'm saying? Doing moves. And then you hear all the other people talking about, hey, hold on, wait. We out here dying. We're struggling. And it's like, you know, regular motherfuckers are just people in their same field. We're dying. And, oh, we need more help. They not saying a goddamn thing because nothing really just fucking with them. But then when they start seeing that, huh, the people that they were trying to fight for is now turning their back on them. What the fuck? And that's what I always fucking say, man. These black people be looking retarded. And I always say this. Ain't no damn way I will fight for the white man. Like, go hard for these motherfuckers. For them niggas to turn around and throw your ass in the motherfucking pokey, nigga. You know what I'm saying? It just, it makes, it makes no goddamn sense. These motherfucking bozos be looking retarded. It's like, bro, you fighting for these motherfuckers so fucking hard. And then just for these motherfuckers to turn their back on your ass and throw your ass like away like a piece of tissue. You know what I'm saying? That's why I just, I don't never... I don't never, I don't never give them motherfuckers no type of credit because it's not like in the day these motherfuckers. Yeah, I don't understand. These motherfuckers will literally kill you, and though if they kill you, then what? So it's like nothing. So you might as well say fuck you and do what you want to do and say and, and do what you gotta do because these motherfuckers don't care. They gonna use you as much as they can. That's what white people do. They use you. They 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 put they push their agenda on you. They use you, and then they would keep you down. Like the same situation where we at, they would use the white people would use. Like especially they they got this a bad habit, like this at um at at, at restaurant. They would use the white people would use the Mexicans to keep to push their agenda to keep the black people down. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like man. They they tricky, you know what I'm saying? Like, if y'all ever watched Dave Chappelle interview, and Dave Chappelle was talking about, yeah, my director, this white dude, he came in whoop the whoop, and he wanted me to put on a dress, and he was like, it was gonna be a good move for the situation if I do what it do, and he, he was like, nah, 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 I'm not gonna do that. But you're like, man, if you really just do this, just think about it. You would make the movie such a good movie. Just to flip it around and just do this. I'm telling you, it's going to kill the movie. Dave Chappelle like, nah, nah, no. And then they brought the other director in like, man, come on, Dave Chappelle. If you do this, man, it will make the movie so much better. And then they're like, nah, you got me fucked up. So then they came around and came back to him and gave him a, a flip without the motherfucking dress one. So it just shows you, man, these white people are master conniving, cunning people. 
You know what I'm saying? And it's like that's what that's how they did to use to, to, to take over most of the shit that what is now. They come to you like they your friends, and then they and then they and then they stab you in your back. You know what I'm saying? And it's like you know. The, the, the black people they they not they don't wake they not they don't wake up you know what I'm saying it's like they feel like cause they doing a little bit better than the rest of the black people or they got a little bit more clout they doing it they thinking that they just killing the game nigga you just part of the goddamn system these white people are just keeping you to make you make other niggas mad you know what I'm saying and it's just like oh well if he wins we just make the other people happy, so we just use this motherfucker to, to promote everything we do. So it's like, bro, when you had a time to tell people, hey, man, we not getting paid a goddamn thing in this bitch, and they making us do all this goddamn political work, promoting this goddamn shit, and they just using motherfuckers. Like, and, and that's what make motherfuckers don't understand, man, you know. Motherfuckers be thinking like they different from everybody else because you know they get a higher position, nigga. No, bro. They it's like they just using you as much as they can. You know what I'm saying? Too, they can just throw you away. It's just like once you ain't good good enough in this motherfucking world, they gon' they gonna throw you up. You know what I'm saying? And you get you can get caught up into the system where they feel like, oh yeah, you this and that. Oh yeah, we whoop the whoop. Nigga, they just putting a battery in your back, nigga. They putting a battery in your back and pushing you off a ledge, nigga. And then you coming out like, bruh, but I did everything y'all wanted me to do. But why did y'all not? Because they don't fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? That's just how um the society is, especially with white people, man. You know, they would use the system and use everything in the system to fuck you over and be like, hold on, what did, what did I do? I done gave you this and that and, and this and that and this. But then the whole time they been, they were stealing half of everything you had. You know what I'm saying? Tower, and Tower P just part part of the, the system where they fucked you over. And she thought she was really winning in this shit. And when you, to find out, nobody really wins in this motherfucking shit. This shit is, is a whole, you know what I'm saying, scam. It's like robbing a bank. You in and out. You know, it's quick money. Even though, you know, you get paid a lot of money in acting and producing all this shit. You got, you got to think about this shit. This shit is like a lottery, nigga. You basically hit the lottery. When you did that shit, you hit the lottery and you're making big money moves, so you gotta make big money money decisions. And you're not making the big money decisions, you're giving all your money on to these motherfuckers to help you produce and make your TV show and shit. These niggas still have your goddamn money. But you don't need all these goddamn motherfuckers to produce your, 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 your movie or whatever to get you in. You get a nigga 30K, nigga, you could've got you, nigga, you could've did it yourself, nigga. If you don't, nigga, I understand because you, you gonna need managers and shit and it gets you far in life. That shit, people think like that shit don't, it really does. Managers and producers and all this shit, they, it gets you far in life, but it costs you a shit ton of money. So it's like, yeah, you gonna get far as fuck. You get all the clout, you get all the this and that, all the accolades and all this and that. But then you start thinking about yourself like, damn, was the accolades and all the clout, was it really worth it? You know what I'm saying? Now I can't even help myself no more. I can't keep my family up afloat. I'm a living check by check. So you, you, you start to think like, damn, Okay, I was happy that I got the clout, but it's like, damn, now you need some shit that to help you in your life, and, and what they gave you was not enough, and that's when you start seeing that they fucked you over, you know what I'm saying, it's like, you know, that's what, this was, I, and I think this is what they do with the black people, man, they, they, they promise these people with the fame and all that, and it's like, you get that money, and it's like the most money you've ever fucking seen. But it's like you thinking it's a shit ton of money. It's really not a lot of money. Because what they make, what they gonna make off of you is a shit ton of money. They make you like I said, man, you making a million, they making thirty to forty million dollars off of you, bro. So it's like you gotta and then you gotta pay these niggas back the million. See base was in a three sixty bit. She was in the eight twenty. But it's like, you know, her high and her risk reward is, is high. You know, she was in this bitch for 20 years. If it takes you 20 years to be like, damn, I might have fucked up. You, you, you had a good career. 20 years of, of, of doing what you're doing, living and doing decent, doing all right. I mean, shit, you could be worse shit. You could be in that bitch not doing nothing or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Dirt broke. No no properties. No, 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 no nothing to show for yourself. Like motherfucking, um, that nigga play basketball with LeBron James. You could be like that nigga, man. But, you know, you still float, you know. And it's like, when you get these type of um, acting strikes, man, it's like, bruh, yes, these white people gonna get 
buku more, more money than um than the, the black actors because you know you gotta understand who run the, who run the the fucking actor scenes and shit, man. They they gonna promote they movie in all everywhere without the niggas even trying to really promote they shit. They gonna promote their movies in every fucking country they can. When it comes to black people, you gotta promote your own shit. It's like, bro, I gotta promote my own shit, bro. What the fuck do I have all these people around me in this business to, who like I'm not, like. What, what Monique, Monique and that bitch was saying, right? Yeah, nigga, not waiting for the work for fucking free, nigga. What the fuck do we think this is, nigga? Niggas not like, nigga, bro. I'm, I'm not coming on, on in on my off day, nigga, to work, nigga. Like I'm, and, and I'm clocking, nigga. Like no, nigga. Like, I don't work for free, nigga. Like you know what I'm saying? So it's like, bro, it's like, bro. If you want, if you, and it always comes to this, man. If you want to let these motherfuckers, your family, your motherfuckers, on the street, you know. You barely know you steal from. Why would let these white people steal from you, man? But these white people gonna do what they gonna do, man. You know, when people start understanding how this fucking world is, when you get into like the business type of world, you gotta understand this. This, this business is more crooked than what you you doing, man. Man, they can take, bro. You, if you, it's really just like this, man. I'm telling y'all, this, this this business world is some is some crooked shit, man. It's some crooked. Cold hearted choco type of shit, nigga. They put you in a choco. They put some of the gangsters niggas in the, in the world into a choco because they, they don't understand what the how to work the system. You know what I'm saying? They get fucked by the system. So it's like, bro, you can't let the system fuck you. You know what I'm saying? And Tara P, she learning from this shit, man. She she realizing that I didn't do all this shit. I ain't got nothing to show for it. And that's what motherfuckers think. They get into this situation, they be like, man. I'm glad I'm so fucking clouded cloud up and famous as fuck. But then it's like, damn, okay, I'm famous. Everybody fucking know me. It's like, okay, what's the point? So you got to just think about it, man. Hey, man, say, man. And then sometimes the money don't even be what the issue is. It's just, bro, you don't get the respect out of this shit. Like, bro, it's, it's a whole bunch of shit in this situation where, you know, we got to keep on fighting, man. Yes, black people got to stand together, together, man, because in this world, man, Black people, especially here, it was like, we by ourselves. We the most hated race in the world. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody with us. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody with us. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, man. That's why we got to keep on fighting for our own American people. It's like, because at the, at the end of the day, we the ones, man. Can't let these motherfuckers keep on draining and using us, man. Because we know, when we start waking up and understanding our value and understand who we is as people, they can't fucking control us no more, man. And that's and it's up and it's stuck. That's why they scary. That's why they trying every technique. Every tactic to keep us down, but it's over there. The tail is about to be the head, bro. It's over for these motherfuckers. The head about to be the tail. It's over, bro. We back. We going back up, man. And, and, and they gotta try every trick to keep us down. It's just not gonna work, man. So I hope y'all enjoyed these videos. Make sure you like, subscribe. I be bitch hood and outside. Big crib type shit, man. Gangish. Hey, Dad. You know what I want. We need to talk about this shit. Be legendary. You know this is instrumental, you the engineer on it, so. Hold that camera.